You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Ask Drone You as we cover this week's drone news. Joining me today, as always, is our good friend and confidant, a drone pilot who doesn't mind testing the limits. And it seems like other people don't mind testing his limits. I'm talking about the great Hayek Costello from Drone DJ. Welcome, my friend. Hey, Paul. Good morning. Thank you for such an amazing introduction. Uh, it's getting cold here in New York. I got the fireplace on behind me. It's like in the 20s outside. So I wish I was still in Albuquerque, where things, I'm sure, are a lot warmer. Hey, well, it is 45 degrees. Hold on, hold on. 45 degrees, but it's warming up to 62. And you know how the sun is out here, so it'll feel like 70. Yeah, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Well, that's why they say you should live in the great Southwest, because if you like to fly, there's no better place to live. I really believe that, too. I used to think Florida was really the best place to fly, but, you know, I, I just don't see that anymore. No, I think I agree. I mean, uh, you guys have big, wide open, clear blue skies, and it seems like the weather is pretty consistent. So for flying drones, I mean, outside of the balloon fiesta, because that week gets a little crazy, but I think most of the time you guys are in pretty good shape down there. Could not agree more, yeah. my friend. Could not agree more. You know, speaking of balloon fiesta, this year's balloon fiesta, last year's balloon fiesta, there was drone detection, right, to see who was flying in the airspace to understand if anyone was actually breaking the TFRs. And even though the balloon fiesta sanctioned pilot repeatedly broke federal law on camera and posted it on Instagram, it also goes to show that to really see who's operating in the airspace, unless someone incriminates themselves on Instagram, it's really difficult and expensive to view other drones flying in the airspace. But it looks like DJI has gone full 180 degree opposite strategic direction than the Mavic Mini by launching this new drone to phone remote ID. Haya, what is going on with DJI's new system to identify pilots who are currently flying in the air? Yeah, this uh, kind of came out of the left field. I mean, we hadn't heard anything about DJI working on this drone to phone remote ID application, but uh, meanwhile they have. And at a event in Montreal, Canada, they actually showed this app and they used a DJI Mavic Air and a DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise. So this happened at the International Civil Aviation Organization's third annual Drone Enable Conference in Montreal, which really is not that far away from where I am. So had I known about this event, uh, actually I thought I, I probably would have gone there. But anyway, DJI showcased this new app and basically what it means is that anybody with this app on their phone is able to tap into the Wi-Fi connection of any drone within let's say roughly uh, I think it's a one kilometer range around you and you can basically see where the drone is you can see the heading the direction the speed and you can see the location of the drone pilot so it seems like a super easy um, although low distance or low range uh, drone remote ID uh, application DJI apparently has uh, developed this under the guidance uh, of the governments, and apparently uh, all drone manufacturers were asked to come up with something like this. Of course, DJI uh, being eager and fast, they are the only ones I think so far that actually have something to show. And even though it's ready to launch, they're not launching it as of yet. It might become available in 2020, but it still depends on what the government is going to say about this application. Uh, we wrote about it on Drone DJ, which of course got shared on social media. And if you look at the comments on social media, some people think it's great because, hey, it's, it's easy, it's cheap, uh, it runs on any phone, doesn't matter what brand of phone it is. So in, in that sense, it's great. But on the flip side, when you're flying a nice and expensive drone, do you want anybody with a phone to be able to pinpoint where you are located? And a lot of people said, well, hey, this is an open invitation for people to mock me and rob me of my uh, Phantom, and we're not happy about this at all. So it seems that as of now, people are very divided about whether this is a good idea. Um, 
DJI hasn't said whether this would be open to anybody. I mean, technically it could be. I mean, I could foresee that perhaps it would only be made available to local law enforcement and not just to anybody. Uh, but there's a lot of things to iron out here. And I'm thinking about running an article on Drone DJ, basically doing a quick poll and see what people have to say about this new application from DJI. Because I think it's um, there's a lot of discussion that needs to take place before they should launch something like this. I did see uh, Brendan Schulman tweet about this particular issue, and a few people had commented that they were actually concerned about someone's ability to see where the pilot was, the heading direction of the drone, etc. Um, and my, I, I have a lot of questions about this because while this does exist for manned pilots, it's really hard to steal an airplane, right? Yeah. Um, but for drones, if you have someone who's just aggressive and they have access to this app, it could cause serious safety harm to the pilots flying. And it makes me wondering, if someone is able to track what I'm doing and where I am, is that not wiretapping? While I don't have the definition in front of me, it is difficult and an easy argument to make. I would say I would like, you know, if there was some sort of restricted access to this application, I think that would be phenomenal. Now, I know DJI and Brendan Schulman already responded to some of these tweets saying no private information is being given out to any particular user. Now, while that is true, you know, it makes you, I just, I don't know, man. I see a lot of questions with this. I see a lot of issues with this. Um, I would say that if you're in rural areas where there are not many drones, it's really easy to figure out who is flying. And, you know, just like uh, off the top of my head, I just go cringe um, because yeah. I, I really don't think that this is a good thing. Now, now there's a flip side to this, right? Because, you know, the FAA has an extremely difficult um, system for enforcement. And it makes me wonder if the FAA is just saying, hey, we can't handle this right now. We don't have the budget. We don't have the personnel. We don't have the research team. We need to figure out a way to enforce, you know, instantly. We've got to provide some tool to enforce. And it makes me wonder, you know, right after they launched the Mavic Mini, DJI puts this out as a tool and means of enforcement. And while there are benefits to that, and I do see it. I just would like to see some systematic um, standard of investigation, standard of um, uh, of enforcement. Because you know, just mm. recently in the DAC meeting on Task Group Three, I think it's Brian Wynn from AUVSI just comes out and says very clearly, the FAA has no standard to judge pilots. You know, we have no standard to judge pilots, which I thought was really funny because AUVSI has their whole TOPS program, which is supposed to be some sort of certification and standard, although it seems like maybe that hasn't been the case just based off of what he's saying. Now, that being said, I think it also goes to show the importance of standardization for operations as a whole. And I end this particular segment with this question, Haya, which is how can we have a means of enforcement if we also have companies that are putting out drones that cause mass confusion about how to handle regulations. But more importantly, I think a better question is this, actually. I don't think I really formulated that question very well. Hi, I think my question is this, is that when DJI puts out a drone like the Mavic Mini and the concerns are that it's so easy to fly that people will not go out and learn how to fly, they won't learn the rules of takeoff, Hmm. they won't learn the ultimate indicator for having a safe flight or not, And what is that going to do to the amount of crashes? What is that going to do to the industry as a whole? And then on the other hand, they have, here's the way to enforce against it. So it's kind of like one hand feeding the other saying, here's a drone that may cause a lot of problems because there's a lot of confusion, but also we are eliminating, you know, the pathway for people to essentially learn. And then here's a way to enforce against them. It it just really seems uh, like mixed messaging here. There's there's a lot of stuff going on there. I think. I mean, um, I think with the DJI Mavic Mini, since you touched upon that drone, there there's at least two issues. Uh, one is the misconception that people think that hey, it's it's less than 250 grams, therefore no rules apply whatsoever. Which of course is not true, but a lot of people seem to think that way, especially when you look in uh, into the comments on YouTube and uh, social media like Facebook. And I think the other problem is that if even if they know that they don't need to register but still need to fly safe and responsibly. 
if you don't need to register, you won't go to the FAA website. So how would you find out about all the ways that you need to fly safely and responsibly? So I think they're kind of setting themselves up to fail there as well. And this is partly uh, DJI's fault. It's also partly, I think, the FAA's fault. Um, there's, there's a lot of room for improvement in terms of educating people uh, what they can and cannot do with uh, when it comes to flying drones, for sure. Yeah, very interesting, though. Very, very, very interesting. And, you know, DJI always is bringing out a majority of news, it seems. And it looks like the uh, DJI just put out a release to Pilot app, which brings more MSX support for the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. Wasn't this something that we already had, Haya? Um, apparently not for iOS users. Um, and it's funny because uh, uh, sometimes people, of course, complain uh, about products and about services on Twitter, uh, in this case regarding DJI products. Uh, in the past, it seemed that DJI wasn't so responsive. I've, I've noticed recently that they've stepped up their game and they're much quicker in responding to people and to, to questions and to concerns on social media. This one was posted uh, by a person uh, who goes by the name of Kai. And he complained basically on Twitter that the iOS app, so for Apple users, was falling behind and that MSX wasn't made available on that application. And pretty quickly, DJI responded that, hey, we're working on this app. It's supposed to come out soon. And then I think it was two weeks later that they said, hey, it's actually going to come out uh, this Friday. And if not, then it's going to be on Monday. And that depends on how quickly Apple, the App Store, basically reviews and um, approves their submission of this new uh, app release. So hopefully it will be there soon. MSX is important for people who use drones with thermal cameras in search and rescue missions or firemen as well because it overlays the thermal image with information from the regular image. So basically you get outlines in your thermal image which make it a lot easier to kind of distinguish what you're looking at. And rather than, let's say, looking at a building that's all uh, pinkish and orange, uh, now you get the lines of, let's say, a door frame or a window frame. So it makes it easier to understand what you're looking at. And in this case, uh, this person on Twitter uses the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Duo for search and rescue missions. So it's understandable that he was complaining to DJI like, hey, you guys need to release this app, uh, bring it up to date and allow me to use this overlay uh, over the thermal image to make us work easier. So yeah, we're excited that this is uh, being released and I don't know why it took them so long, but it's good news that it will happen soon now. It is good news. It is good news. In other news, it looks like DJI has another card up its sleeve as they tease the DJI Mavic 3 and the Inspire 3 which has a lot of people wondering how the new talks with Fujifilm and DJI potentially partnering up may look in the future. What's going on here, Haya? Yeah, so this was in a uh, press release from Fuji about an upcoming firmware update. It's supposed to be released mid-December, the first one, and basically what it will allow you to do, it, is, it opens up the Fuji X-T3, which is a mirrorless uh, interchangeable lens camera. Uh, I got one right here, actually. Um, pretty decent sized camera still. Uh, it's going to allow you to manipulate the camera, so stop and start video recording, but also change exposure settings from your remote controller of the drone. So the big question, of course, I mean, one, this is super exciting news because if Fuji is opening up their camera for control by drone and in talks with DJI, then I would assume that DJI is probably not just talking to Fuji. They're probably talking to Canon and to Sony as well. Um, so that means that there is a good chance that in the near future we'll see a DJI drone that will allow you to fly mirrorless cameras on the drone. And then, of course, the question becomes, OK, what drone are we talking about now? Any mirrorless camera would be too big and too heavy for a Mavic drone. Um, I think it's far more likely that we're looking at an Inspire 3 potentially where you might be able to uh, to fly mirrorless cameras. And if that's the case, that will be awesome because now you can use different cameras, different lenses, prime lenses, zoom lenses. Um, it will basically bring the Inspire line to a to a whole new level, I think. So the firmware update for Fuji is going to hit mid-December. Um, when we're going to be able to see a DJI drone where you can fly this camera with remains to be seen. Based on our information, the DJI Inspire 3 is scheduled to be launched mid next year. Um, during the DJI Airworks convention in LA uh, two months ago, they did show a gimbal and DJI said that um, working with third parties 
it seems that the development time gets hung up in many cases on developing the gimbal hardware and software. So what DJI has done is they now provide a um, standardized gimbal that uh, DJI has already manufactured and developed to save those third parties time. And they don't have to worry about the gimbal anymore, but can basically move forward to adding sensors and cameras to the aircraft. So if that gimbal's uh, construction is added to the Inspire 3, uh, that would be a pretty sweet combination, I think. So fingers crossed, um, we're not sure yet, but this is definitely something we'll keep an eye on to see if we can get any more information on. I think it would be amazing to have some sort of functionality between Fuji and DJI. And I know that we've kind of talked about and hinted about the Inspire 3 and the ability to have some sort of gimbal that was teased, like you said, at Airworks, where we can have really any camera on that gimbal. That would be a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, feature or feat for production companies as a whole. But bringing us to our next news story of the week. It looks like one of the test sites from the IPP has actually been given quite a lot of leeway when it comes to BVLOS operations. Now this is exciting for me, Haya, because I really think that if the FAA has this information and this data, well, that we might have some sort of system to allow for other operators to have a BVLOS waiver. Haya, what do you have? All right, so in New York State, there is a uh, testing corridor for drone flights, and it's a 50-mile uh, corridor, and the uh, first part now has received approval from the FAA to allow for drone testing beyond visual line of sight, or BVLOS, as it's uh, called within the industry. Apparently, this is a first, and um, this is an area that's uh, four by eight miles. So it's a pretty large area, and it's roughly about two hours away from where I am, which is, uh, let's say, three hours north-northwest from New York City. It's a pretty large testing ground, and um, having a section of that available for BVLOS testing is important because pretty much all the commercial drone applications, so whether you think about delivery by drone or really any other drone uh, commercial drone application, you're going to need to fly your drone uh, beyond visual line of sight. Otherwise, you would be way too limited. So to have a testing facility where companies can actually try out and test and, and fine tune their equipment is important. And to have something like that here in New York, I think, uh, is, is a great step forward as well. Uh, we know that a lot of the drone testing has taken place uh, in North Carolina, which seems to be the state at the forefront of drone development here in the U.S. But to see something here close to home here in New York, um, is, is very exciting. So I'm very excited about this. Um, it's in Oneida County, New York, and Newware and New York State are also involved in making this happen. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that to see what kind of testing is going to take place. And if there's anything interesting going on, I'd be more than happy to drive up there and uh, take a look for myself. So we'll keep you guys posted. Definitely. It is exciting, Haya, because again, like I said, if we can get some sort of system for beyond visual line of sight waivers with the FAA and the data from these missions can provide necessary intel on just how safe those operations may or may not be, I think it could really open up the industry for growth once we get a BVLOS system for waivers. Because as of right now, you can do what we call the EVLOS which is really extended visual line of sight, yeah. and that's great and all, but it's really it really is uh, it's splitting the difference. And you know, as we say here at Drone, you you should never split the difference. But with that said, it also goes to show there is still a fundamental battleground going on in the FAA when it comes to BVLOS operations and air carrier operations. Because if it were easy to fly beyond visual line of sight and carry packages the chances of drone delivery taking off a lot faster, well, we all know what would happen if we had some sort of streamlined process to allow for an air carrier service. This has really brought about a whole new problem because we have one line of carriers going under 14 CFR Part 135 as air carriers, and we have another group trying to do, you know, drone delivery, BVLOS under Part 107. So at some point, there's going to have to be a coming to the head to figure out where the these operations really fall under. But honestly, it's really exciting. It's also exciting to see companies like UPS actually make their first revenue generating delivery by drone. So what happened here, Haya? 
Yeah, so this is a uh, part of UPS called UPS Flight Forward, a separate entity owned by UPS that is focused on making deliveries by drone happen. They are, in fact, the first part 135 certified uh, air carrier using drones to make deliveries, meaning that they can basically uh, apply this service anywhere within the United States. So far, all their testing has taken place at the WakeMed uh, Hospital Campus in North Carolina in Raleigh. Now they've made their first um, delivery for commercial reasons in partnership with CVS Pharmacy. So they actually flew a drone from a local CVS uh, facility to somebody's house to make a delivery of prescription drugs or medication. Uh, And this just happened about a week ago. Um, It is very exciting for sure. Like I said uh, earlier, North Carolina is probably the most advanced state in the US when it comes to testing uh, commercial drone applications. If not, at least it's the state that has been uh, getting the most media coverage. Seeing UPS getting actively involved with uh, deliveries by drone, I think is a huge step because once they kind of figure out how to make this work and how to apply it on a larger scale, I think we're pretty much off to the races. Of course, UPS is one of the huge carriers uh, here in the United States. So uh, once they figure out how to make this work on the larger scale, I think uh, the logistics is going to change dramatically and it's going to happen much, much faster, I think, than people anticipate. I think you're so right about that. And I also wrote an article myself, if you guys want to check it out. Um, Hopefully we can get an extended version to you, Haya. But it's talking all about how Amazon or drone delivery could single-handedly prop up the economy. We know that Boeing can single-handedly affect gross domestic product in the United States. So what could be something at that scale that could also affect gross domestic product? As we've seen over the years with history, Haya, the easier it becomes to buy things, typically more things are bought. So what happens if we can take direct-to-consumer purchasing down to sub-60 minutes or below an hour? Can you imagine how much stuff you would buy if your wife and your kids were just knew they could get a candy bar in an hour as long as they went on daddy's phone and just ordered it on Amazon? This is the type of force multiplier that we're talking about with drone delivery. And frankly, drone delivery could single-handedly prop up the economy and really boost consumerism as a whole. I mean, just think of a world where buying is so easy, it's the click of a button, and literally before you have to go pick up your kids from school, that new backpack showed up because, well, when the ketchup is all over their old backpack, you want to show up as the hero with also the perfect backpack that your kid loves. Now, these days of you being a parent hero are coming really soon, so don't worry. But I think drone delivery, Haya, is going to have a macro effect on the economy in ways that people just simply aren't thinking about. I I would totally agree. I think it's uh, the quiet before the storm, right? I mean, it's kind of hard to imagine how that will work for for a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people are just getting acquainted with drones anyway. I mean, they they might be buying their new uh, DJI Mavic Mini right now and kind of getting into it. But to think about the consequences when all these large logistic companies and also retailers are getting into the business of delivering their packages by drone, uh, that just might take people by storm and it might happen a lot faster than people anticipate. I mean, don't forget, it's not just UPS working with CVS uh, here doing these tests. At the same time, you have Google's Wing Aviation working with FedEx and Walgreens doing similar testing. You have Amazon, who's already in the works with their new drone uh, to make their deliveries by drone. And we know that Jeff Bezos, of course, predicted that this was going to happen much sooner. So I, I think it's pretty fair to say that he's anxious to get this going. We have companies like Zipline who've been flying tens of thousands of flights uh, successfully in Africa, delivering blood samples and medication which uh, makes a lot of sense to do over there because the road transportation system is so slow. But if you look at certain parts in the US where you have a lot of islands and people need to um, transport goods and products by ferry and by car and it takes hours, where a drone could probably do that in, uh, in 30 minutes or less, There's a lot of room for companies like Zipline to use their services here in the United States as well. So I think with so many companies working on this and the first one, UPS, already haven't broke that barrier with getting their part uh, 135 certification. I think we're, yeah, it's the quiet before the storm. I think this is going to happen much sooner than people realize. And I think the impact is going to be much larger than people realize as well. Could not agree more. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for this week's news show with Haya and myself. Haya, you have any uh, predictions for what's going to happen Black Friday or Cyber Monday? Anything that you're looking out for? Anything, um, any yeah. accessories, drones? What are you looking for? 
Oh, yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot of stuff, especially when you're looking at accessories. So whether that be ND filters or backpacks or whatnot to, to help you with your drone flying missions, I think there's going to be a lot of specials there. Uh, of course, our sister website, 9to5toys, is always looking out for specials, and we will run those on Drone DJ as well. Then, of course, looking at the drone companies themselves. I mean, DJI just announced their Black Friday and Cyber Monday and also their holiday specials. So they have some stuff up their sleeve. We have an article on Drone DJ already informing you about uh, the discounts that they run. Then, of course, if you look at companies like B&H, Best Buy, Adorama, Drone Nerds in Florida, they're going to have specials as well. And uh, as you know, we're working with Drone Nerds to come up with some unique products that we can offer uh, both here on this podcast and on Drone DJ as well. The first two in the works, uh, we should have those up shortly. And we're working closely with them to see what we can uh, put together for this uh, this upcoming uh, holiday shopping season. So keep an eye out, uh, both on Drone DJ and here on the podcast, as we'll be sure to uh, to push those promotions forward. Awesome, Haya. Well, thank you so much uh, for giving us that intel and that information. Hope you have a great weekend with the family at home, my friend. And as always, it has been fun. So thank you. Thank you as well. It's always a pleasure being on the show, and I'm already looking forward to uh, next week's edition, Paul. I am as well. I'm also looking forward to, uh, we're going to be putting out some Black Friday, Cyber Monday deals ourselves, and I think it's going to be a great time to launch some new stuff, if you know what I'm saying. But that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul, his name is Haya, and you're watching another episode of Ask Drone You.